Hello and welcome viewers, you're watching In Depth with your host Kriti Mishra. Over the past decade, India has emerged as one of the fastest growing bioeconomy in the world. From just $10 billion in 2014, the sector expanded to $165.7 billion in 2024, contributing 4.25% to the national GDP. With an ambitious target of $300 billion by 2030, bioeconomy is steadily becoming a cornerstone of India's sustainable growth and innovation driven by advancements in biotechnology, agricultural innovation and biomanufacturing and also healthcare. India is among the top destinations for biotechnology worldwide and one of the largest destinations for biotechnology in Asia-Pacific. India's bioeconomy has crossed an estimated $130 billion in the year 2024 and has witnessed a manifold increase in valuation in the past 10 years with COVID-19 giving the industry a much-needed push. Today, India is poised as one of the leading destinations for bio-innovation and biomanufacturing, and hence is identified as a sunrise sector and a key part of India's vision of reaching a $5 trillion economy. India's biotechnology sector is categorized into biopharmaceuticals, bioagriculture, bio-IT and bioservices. The Union Cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, approved BioE3, that is, Biotechnology for Economy, Environment and Employment Policy for fostering high-performance biomanufacturing for the Department of Biotechnology. The salient features of BioE3 policy include innovation-driven support to R&D and entrepreneurship across thematic sectors. This will accelerate technology development and commercialization by establishing biomanufacturing and bio AI hubs and biofoundry. Along with prioritizing regenerative bioeconomy models of green growth, this policy will facilitate expansion of India's skilled workforce and provide a surge in job creation. Overall, this policy will further strengthen government's initiatives such as net zero carbon economy and lifestyle for environment and will steer India on the path of accelerated green growth by promoting circular bioeconomy. The Bio E3 policy will foster and advance future that is more sustainable, innovative and responsive to global challenges and lays down the bio vision for Vixit Bharat. Our present era is an opportune time to invest in the industrialization of biology to promote sustainable and circular practices to address some of the critical societal issues such as climate change mitigation, food security and human health. It is important to build a resilient biomanufacturing ecosystem in our nation to accelerate cutting-edge innovations for developing bio-based products. High-performance biomanufacturing is the ability to produce products from medicine to materials to address farming and food challenges and to promote manufacturing of bio-based products through integration of advanced biotechnological processes. To address the national priorities, the BioE3 policy would broadly focus on strategic and thematic sectors like high-value bio-based chemicals, biopolymers and enzymes, smart proteins and functional foods, precession, biotherapeutics, climate resilient agriculture, carbon capture and its utilization and marine and space research. Future economy of the world is going to be largely and largely bioeconomy driven or bio driven. And just as the industrial revolution of 1990s was IT driven, the next revolution of the 21st century is going to be bio driven. And why it becomes significant for us is that why the IT revolution was led by the West and it happened over here a little later. I remember the earlier years, I think it was somewhere in the mid 
90s, early 90s, we had a presentation over here about how the internet works. It was already being used in some of the countries and we were being led to show. And one of the clubs here where the presentation was made, they showed us how you could virtually enter the library, you could pick up the book and it seemed so fascinating, it seemed like a magic show going on. But it had already happened over there. But this time, I think it's now going to be India's turn. And India has an opportunity to take a lead in this next revolution, unlike the last one. And why I'm saying so, because we are all members of the scientific fraternity, so we should have a sound reason about what we say, is that as far as the bioresources are concerned or the bioeconomy is concerned, we enjoy certain advantages which are not enjoyed by the West. A, that we have unlimited resources, unlimited bioresources in this Indian peninsula beginning from the Himalayas right up to the marine. And this has remained either unexplored or underexplored because most of the governments in the past, and thanks to Prime Minister Modi for enabling us to get this policy released, had never given that sector a priority. And to that extent, I must thank Prime Minister Modi's futuristic vision. Rajesh made a series of presentations till the Honorable Prime Minister and his team were convinced about what was being sought to be explained and I'm sure if it was not Prime Minister Modi, we wouldn't have been able to take a step because most of the political governments do not actually seek to venture out into unknown domains. So to that extent, I think I'll be failing in my responsibility if I do not, from the bottom of my heart, thank Prime Minister Modi for having enabled us to venture into an unknown territory and having reposed faith in us when we explained to him that this is what is going to happen next 10-15 years and it's an opportunity for us to become the torch bearers of this new movement. And why I'm saying why we have advantage, A, of course, we have unlimited resources, B, these resources were not fully explored and C, we have immense potential of biomanufacturing. We are already, in the last 5-10 years, we have risen to rank, I think, 12 as biomanufacturers. In India-Pacific, we are even higher, somewhere 2 or 3. And to explain and to, to simplify it for the benefit of the friends from outside the scientific fraternity and also the friends from the media, I think the outcomes, if we are able to move as we have envisaged for ourselves and we move with the same kind of dedication because this is going to be a journey which is going to take a few years maybe in two generations one of the primary aims of the initiative taken by the department of biotechnology is to stimulate the transition of chemical based industry to a more sustainable bio based industrial models by promoting circular economy the policy focuses on six key sectoral pillars high value bio based chemicals, biopolymers and enzymes, spawn proteins and functional foods, precession biotherapeutics, climate resilient agriculture, carbon capture and its utilization, marine and space research. <laughs> energy processes develop karenge bio uh, bio uh, systems ke saath ya hum personalized medicine ki baat karenge ya diagnostics ki baat karenge ya bio agriculture mein hum jaise uh, vikas karenge to har jagah artificial intelligence ka upyog hoga uske prediction mein uske mitigation mein uske diagnosis mein aur uske efficiency improvement mein to in sab muddon ko dekhte hue jitne bhi bio hubs aage aayenge उनकी शुरुआत ही आने वाले समय में आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस के ऊपर होगी और वो जमाना चला गया जबकि हम कह सकते हैं कि हम बाद में आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस उसमें ऐड करेंगे नहीं अब उसकी ग्रोथ इतनी हो चुकी है कि हम शुरुआत से ही उसको अपने सोच में डालते हैं और उसका उपयोग करते हैं द यूनियन कैबिनेट अप्रूव द प्रपोजल ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी ऑन 24th अगस्त 2024 फॉर इंडियास फर्स्ट बायोटेक्नोलॉजी पॉलिसी the bio e3 policy that is biotechnology for economy environment and employment the policy focuses on fostering high performance biomanufacturing and lays down the framework 
for Biomanufacturing and Biofoundry Initiative. This initiative aims to promote green growth by shifting from consumptive manufacturing to regenerative and sustainable practices. What is bioeconomy? Well, a bioeconomy is defined as an economy where the basic building blocks for materials, chemicals and energy are derived from renewable biological sources. UNFAO defines the bioeconomy as knowledge-based production and the use of biological resources, processes and methods to provide goods and services in a sustainable manner in all economic sectors. The term bioeconomy became popular in the first decade of the 21st century. Food systems bio-based products are important aspects of bioeconomy. That includes sustainable agriculture, sustainable fishing, forestry and aquaculture, food and feed manufacturing, bioplastics and biodegradable clothing. Why do we need bioeconomy? Well, human activities have modified the global climate over the last century, leading to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. This in turn led to an increase in Earth's average temperature and climate change. The climate change impact on food security, human health, migratory flows, biodiversity loss and rising sea levels, among other aspects, will lead to a decline in productivity and wealth creation, especially in less developed countries. In this context, the bioeconomy will play a key role in fight against climate change. What is the potential of bioeconomy? Well, bioeconomy has enormous potential for creating millions of green jobs in rural and coastal regions, ensuring food security and reducing hydric stress, renewing and modernizing industrial fabrics, introducing innovations in agriculture, aquaculture, forestry and other industries, reducing atmospheric emissions and dependence on fossil resources, hence aiding in climate mitigation and carbon neutrality. It is aligned with sustainable development goals and will help in recovering part of degraded ecosystems and restoring biodiversity. The bioeconomy influences the achievement of the end of poverty, zero hunger and the reduction of inequalities. The bioeconomy relates to the goals of clean water and sanitation, sustainable cities and communities and responsible consumption and production. The bioeconomy derives sustainable industry and infrastructure as well as promotes economic growth and decent work. The bioeconomy promotes health and well-being and climate action which benefits underwater life and the life of terrestrial ecosystem. What is circular bioeconomy? The principles of circular economy are reuse, repair and recycle and these are also fundamentals of bioeconomy. The bioeconomy thrives to derive both sustainable development and circularity in tandem. Through reuse, repair and recycling, the total amount of waste and its impact is reduced. It also saves energy and minimizes pollution of soil, air and water, thus helping to prevent damage to the environment, climate and biodiversity. What is the strategy for bioeconomic growth? Bioeconomic advancement requires a strategic action plan starting from the grassroots level of governance along with multilateral efforts. These include increased investment in research, innovation and training. Research on bioeconomy issues and their application tends to be disconnected. To avoid this, public-private partnerships should be promoted. Strengthening policy coordination and engagement. Increasing synergies and coherence between bioeconomy-related policies, initiatives and economic sector is essential. Improving markets and competitiveness. This consists of providing the knowledge base needed to make different sectors of bioeconomy more sustainable as well as boosting the development of clean energy. The growth of the Indian biotechnology sector is fueled by rising demand at both domestic and international levels. The rise in domestic demand is fueled by initiatives such as Aat Nirbhar Bharat and Make in India, while overseas demand for Indian vaccines and biopharmaceuticals is due to the globally competitive efficacy 
of Indian products. India exports vaccines to over 150 countries and is a leading destination for contract manufacturing and clinical trials. In order to contain healthcare costs, companies are leveraging generics and biosimilars and India has poised itself as a hub to deliver affordable access to innovative and inclusive healthcare solutions. India has about 3% share in global biotechnology industry. We would be reaping benefits at three levels. A. Domestic. Domestically, as the name indicates, E3, bio E3. So we would be benefiting our economy. We would be contributing to the environment concerns of the world, which will also give us a separate kind of a status. And C, of course, we would be generating employment. So these are going to be huge, huge domestic advantages. Then globally, we would A, be introducing a new concept of agri-food. As Rajesh was showing you, that milk slide, the day is not far, you will have non-animal milk. It sounds so fascinating, because, and I think one of the concerns in Bangalore has already started that. A company there, a startup, they have already started manufacturing and they displayed on the tin non-animal milk and started getting exported also. Because our milk consumption, in spite of being 25, 70, uh, I mean, or in spite of producing 25% uh, of the total production of milk across the world, is still not fully met. So where are we going to meet it? Where are you going to keep the animals? The, you will have the problems of land, the problems of environment. And therefore, this would be a new opening. And this is going to give a lead to the world because, again, we have an advantage over here. The biotechnology sector has the potential to have a multiplier effect on the overall economic growth of the country. This sunrise sector enables technology-led solutions for healthcare, industrial manufacturing, agriculture, environment and clean energy. The biotech sector, particularly for vaccines, diagnostics and therapeutics, has shown to the world that India can fight global challenges like the COVID-19 pandemic from the forefront and contribute with its first-in-class and best-in-class solutions, not only for itself, but for the entire world. We are already witnessing the increasing contribution of biotech startups innovating new affordable and accessible medical devices and digital health and tech solutions. From large manufacturers to young startups, the innovation ecosystem in the country has come together today and India is self-sufficient in most of the products required to manage the pandemic and we need to keep this momentum going. Well viewers, that's all we had for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side. Watch more programs of Sunset TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to like and share them.